I'm going to um, do an introduction to UX and product design today. Uh, please note that um, since this is an introduction, um, I will try my best to cover every aspect of UX. But if you have any additional information, I mean, uh, additional questions, um, please connect with me on LinkedIn and I will um, answer them um, for you guys. So to get started, I'm just gonna add in a little bit about me um, and thank you, Sandy, for the introductions. Um, so just add on top of what she mentioned um, earlier, um, I previously worked at DoorDash, OrthoFX, Starsona, and Bliss Divorce. Uh, I've been in the UX industry for about, about five years now. Um, and um, just a side note, I am a completely self-taught UX designer. So I started um, doing self-study when I was 19 years old and got landed my first internship when I was 20 years old. Um, so yeah, um, I know uh, UX field, many of you are you know, starting as a self-taught designers. Um, and just so you know that um, uh, being self-taught designer is completely fine and completely normal. So I just want to give you that confidence. And um, besides, you know, doing a lot of contests and other stuff, I also uh, do a lot of writings about UX. So um, do check out my uh, Medium accounts, uh, Medium um, articles um, on UX as well. So you can find that um, on my LinkedIn or my website at uh, vikigo.me. Um, beside that, I also a co-founder at Student of UXD. Um, this is a communication a community um, of UX um, designers, um, especially like students of all, all ages who are pursuing UX design. So if you um, would like to see more of UX related events, um, we have a lot of that coming up in the next few months. So please sign up to be a member um, if you can at studentofuxd.com. So um, let's get started um, with the workshop today and I'll just go over the agenda um, a little bit. So first I will cover some basic terminologies um, because I know that within um, you know this workshop we have designers but also um, non-designers um, here today. So I just want to make sure that everyone have the knowledge of some basic terminologies first. Um, and then next up I will um, do some um, define UX and explain to you what UX means and then um, the relationship between UX and UI stand for uh, user interface. Um, and then Next, I will go over what is UX research and also what our you know, UX jobs looks like. And also like for San Jose State student, I would like to talk a little bit about like how to get started in UX if you have no idea like how to you know, get started. So um, let's go to the next slide. So first for basic terminologies, today I will mention um, a lot about like products, um, and UX, CX, and UI. So for products, within today's workshop, um, products will be covering um, all the digital products. That means it will be um, focusing on mobile applications, website, software, um, and as well as VR and AR technologies. Um, and then UX stand for user experience, um, CX stand for customer experience, and UI stand for user interface. Um, and then I will dive into more of what this means um, in a bit. Um, so first, um, let's define UX. So what is UX? Um, UX stands for user experience, and user experience encompasses all the aspects of the end user's interactions with the company, with its service, and with its products. So this definition is given to you by the New Nielsen Norman Group. This is one of the um, oldest, the most prestigious um, UX organizations out there. So um, I recommend um, check them out later um, if you are interested in UX. Um, so let me give you an, an, a better example, like a better visual example of this definition. So um, I have um, an app right here, Uber app. Um, as an example for um, today. Um, so as you know, Uber is a ride share app. And for this experience, um, for this uh, example, um, we're gonna look at Uber as a product. And then for user um, who download Uber, um, their ultimate goal is to book a ride and safely arriving to des their destinations. So the purpose of them downloading the app is basically to um, 
get a ride and to get to wherever um, they want to. And from the moment they download the app to the moment they say they they, they get there to their destinations, um, there's a whole user journey. Um, there's a whole like interactions that the user will make within the app. Um, so including you know sign up, um, booking the ride, track the trip, make a payment, um, and etc. So that whole user journey from the moment they download to the moment they get to the destinations, um, that is called the user experience. Um, so the UX or user experience is how the products works and how the user experiences the products. So I hope that um, clear out the differences between you know, products, user experience and user goal. Um, so I'm gonna talk just a little bit more about um, UX. Um, UX design, so it is a design process that used to create products to provide meaningful and useful, delightful experience for the users. Um, it is a good combination of design, psychology, business, market research, human computer interactions, and technology. Um, so UX design, um, it should be human centric, meaning it should focus on the usability aspect of the product it should focus on the user emotions while they are using the products. Um, and especially it should help the user to um, get to their goal and to um, fulfill their needs. So for example, um, as, as, as you were looking at the Uber app, the user goal is to get to where they are, um, get to uh, their destinations. So um, the UX designer should be able to provide that needs and help them to get to the goal that the users want. So as a UX designer, you are going to design how the user interacts with the product um, and some of the daily tasks that UX designer do at work, including solving problems, conduct, conducting research. Um, and then after you have your research done, um, there will be analyzing of data, um, there will be a lot of creating the information architectures and doing prototyping and wireframing. Um, and then there's a user interface aspect that will go into it and um, visual design skill will be needed as well. Um, other tasks will be including creating the user flow, um, doing creative thinking, cre uh, critical thinking, um, and do many of the usability testing or user testing. And uh, part of the job is also um, doing iterating, meaning if you are about to roll out a new app or a new features of an app, um, you need to do usability testing to test with your users. And then if the users let you know that, okay, this part is broken or is very confusing, um, you would have to go back and iterate it, iterate your design. So that is a very common workflow um, as a UX designer. Um, and as you see here, user interface, which is UI, um, and visual design is part of UX. Um, it's not a completely separate thing, but um, many of you know, the new um, you know, designers who want to enter the field, they uh, often mistake that um, UX equal UI um, or that UX designer um, they just make the app looks pretty or make the website looks pretty. And that um, UX designer mainly focus on the visual design only, um, but that is not true at all. And I will um, dive in more into it in a bit. Um, but yeah, this is, these are the common problems of you know, most students who are new to the field. Um, they often have this um, perspective. So um, to explain a little bit about what is included in UX and where does UI stand within UX. Um, I have this diagram here that will help explain that. So if you look at the user interface, um, it is going to be the top of the cake. So it is considered just a surface of what makes a good user experience uh, great. So user interface is the graphical layout of the applications, um, meaning it could be like, you know, buttons, it could be um, topography that you use, could be what font you use, um, it could be like background colors. So basically it is the look and feel of the applications um, that is considered the user interface. However, within UX, um, beside the interface, we have a lot more important um, layers within it. So um, having a strong skeleton structure, scope and strategies will be 
the bone of making your user experience great. So let's say if you have a very beautiful app, um, you know, it looks really nice and colorful and, you know, everyone loves how it looks. However, if it's not functioning well, um, if the structure is really messy, if the strategy is not good, um, then the user experience is not going to be great. Um, imagine if you are buying um, like a product on Amazon and let's say there are 10 different steps or like 10 different pages before you go into checkout. That will create um, you know, a lot of confusing um, to the users um, because the structure wasn't built nicely and the strategy wasn't really good. Um, so yeah, if you have the really nice interface but not a good structure, then the whole user experience will be affected. Um, so next I will talk about, um, you know, what makes a good um, user experience. Um, what I have over here is something called the UX Honeycomb. And this serves as the tool for continuously improving um, areas of products and services. So um, if you are doing um, like a website or an application, um, use this as the checklist of um, thinking about like if this makes a good user experience. So like ask yourself or ask your users, um, is this product helpful? Is this features like usable? Is this page on this website like valuable for your user? Um, so yeah, consider this as a checklist and see if this will help um, your user to get to their goal. So I'm gonna have, I have an example that um, will help to clarify that as well. So um, if you're looking at here, I have Airbnb as an example. So as you know, Airbnb, um, its purpose is to help you to um, book a short-term or like a long-term vacations. And from the moment um, your user download the app or log in into the app to the point where they successfully book a trip, um, book a listing or um, a long-term vacations, um, the whole experience in between is called a user journey. And within this user journey, um, we can use this UX Honeycomb as a checklist to see if the experience is good for the user. So let's say um, looking at this page where you're browsing all the listing um, should be a check uh, checklist of, you know, is this useful? Is this, you know, valuable for the user or is this accessible for your user? Um, so this is where the UX Honeycomb um, come in place. Um, as you're doing a product. Um, I have another visual example that will help you to understand a little bit more between the relationship with UX and UI. So let's say you have a very good product, like a, the structure and the, it functions very well, but the interface is not good. Um, then it, it won't be very attractive to your user. And same thing with if you have a very um, good UI, like it looks really nice, your app is really good, but it's not functioning well for your users, then most likely they will not return to use it. So as a UX designer, you are going to um, strike for um, a balance between good UX and good UI. So when you have a balance of, um, of these, um, then your user will be very happy. They will be, um, you know, returning and use your applications, use your products like all the time. And it gives them, you know, it makes them happy. And this will be very good for both the users and also good for the business as well. Um, so we just talked about um, good UX. Now we're going to talk about um, bad UX. So um, bad UX is going to cause a lot of frustrations uh, from the user perspective, but also from the company perspective as well. Um, so imagine if you're making an app and it's just very confusion, confusing for the user, it's just give the user frustrations, um, it will not be usable for your users at all. And the cost of that UX is a lot um, from the company's perspective. So um, not only are you going to lose your customer and lose your users, um, the companies will waste more money and waste more time to you know, design, redesign, and redeveloping the apps 
Um, so the cost and you know the time waste is going to be uh, greater than anything. So um, most companies they are really um, like focus on UX as the first few steps so that to make sure that the experience is good um, so that they don't have to you know waste a lot of money afterward to redesign it. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick summary of what just we, we just talked about. Um, so UX designer decides how the product works and how to how the user interacts with the product. Um, and then we talk about how UI is not UX. However, UI is a part of UX already. And then user experience or UX uh, is a combination of looks and feel and usability. So it should look good, but also has to be functional. Um, next up, I'm going to talk about um, UX research. Um, so UX research is going to be very, very important. It should be the first step of um, like when you're doing design. So this should be the beginning of your design process. And um, UX research is basically the step to help you to focus and understand the user expectations, um, behaviors, needs, and also motivations. Um, and after you do your UX research, either through um, interviews or focus group or survey, um, these data is then used to you know, ensure that all of your product design decisions, it benefits the user and it's not just based on your personal opinions. Um, and yeah, again, everything you do has to be user focused. That means that's where research come into and how like it's very important as the um, uh, part of the design process. Um, because if without research um, and if you just go straight to designing, um, what happened is sometimes you're gonna slip your mind. You don't know what your user want. So basically you think you know your user, but you do not. So um, often if you skip the research part, what happened is that you are going to design a product based on your own personal opinions. Um, and therefore, if it's launched or when it rolled out, um, your user will not get it at all because it wasn't designed for them. It was like designed for you. So um, always remember like what is the product without its user. So always start, um, you know, doing any type of UX design first uh, with the user research. Um, and here are some research methodologies. Um, and as a UX designer, you don't need to know all of these. Um, these are more for um, UX researcher, um, like at, um, their job more. So, um, but as a UX designer, you are expected to know um, a little bit of these. So for example, um, UX designer should know how to conduct a user interview, how to write um, a good user um, research uh, questions or how to build a persona and um, do some journal journey mappings. Um, so these steps are just, um, it's good to know. However, you, you, you don't need to know all of these because this is part of the UX researcher's um, job. And uh, for me, um, I learned how to do um, these basic research from a class at San Jose State actually. Um, I believe it was um, MCOM 104. That's where I learned how to um, write a non-biased um, user interview questions um, and how to conduct a non-biased um, user um, survey. So I recommend check that class out if you have more of the um, visual design background than um, the research background. Um, so next, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, UX within a company and, you know, what is the step of, um, you know, what is, what other step of launching a product or creating a new product. So usually if there is a new features or a new product or a new, a new app that, that will be launched from a company, usually it will start with um, a project managers or stakeholders um, who will give you the project brief and project requirements. And from then, um, usually within the company, you will be expected to work um, with a UX researcher or um, a UI designer engineer to come up with a user flow and come up with 
uh, solutions that it that works for um, the users but also works for the business and then after um, you know your decision um, is made and after doing usability testing on your user to see if your apps works well um, that will goes to the development part and this is where engineers and developers will make your apps or make your website into a functioning um, product and um, for UX design um, within like a company usually they will be under either product or under a engineer um, a department so it's considered more of a tech job than a creative design job and that means um, the salary will be very attractive and that's why a lot of um, you know designers want to uh, transition from graphic design to UX design so just give you a range of um, salary of UX design jobs um, intern salaries will be about 90,000 to 100,000 a year and senior salary could range from $130,000 a year to $250,000 a year. These are without stocks. So um, I know it's very attractive. However, there's a lot of work um, that they expect from you as well. Um, so for qualifications, um, usually uh, companies look for someone who has a BA, MA, um, BS or MS in either design human computer interactions or HCI um, or computer science. Um, however, um, they are really open to other related few as well. So many of UX designer transition from graphic design, um, human factors um, and sociology and even psychology. Um, I have many friends who are UX designer that, um, that had background in sociology and psychology um, because you know, uh, design is one part of it but also the user behavior is the other part of it so um, these majors are you know like they they all want to get into ux either through ux designer job or ux researcher jobs um, and uh, usually for job um, description um, they would um, expect you to be able to collaborate with other partners within the companies um, that means um, researchers, engineers, content strategists, and product managers. Um, they would expect you to know and understand the design process as well, and also know how to create user flow and wireframe and building um, user interface mockup and prototype. So I'll talk a little bit more of how to do so in a bit. Um, and also they expect you to know how to design for multiple platforms. So um, basically, um, if you're learning design right now or UX design right now, make sure you're not just learning how to design for like iOS app, but make sure you know how to do it for like Android, um, do it for software and also um, different websites as well. Um, and especially to be considered for any of the UX design job, they are required you to have a portfolio that has multiple projects and case study that demonstrate your experience um, crafting the usable design uh, digital interfaces. Um, so yeah, these are just a summary of the uh, common qualifications for um, UX job. Um, so for speaking of tools, um, I would say the uh, industry standard and requirements nowadays would be Figma. Um, and Figma is um, free, so if you have some time, I would recommend uh, check it out. They are a cloud-based um, products, so you can collaborate with your team, with your friends, and make an app together, um, do something for fun. Um, you, can, you can explore it um, at Figma. And then um, other two software are Adobe XD and Sketch. Um, so these um, used to be like more common. However, Figma took over recently. So most companies, um, including Google, Dropbox, um, DoorDash, um, they all switched to uh, Figma from Sketch. So, um, however, like it's good to know all three. Um, and if you picked up Figma, you can pick up the other two really quickly. Um, the interface looks very similar. So I actually start with Sketch and then picked up XD and then pick up Figma. And um, you can test out, you know, you can learn the other two really quickly um, in a matter of like hours. 
um, and there are other um, software to know as well, um, including um, Envision, uh, Framer, and Principle. Um, these are considered more of the prototyping uh, software, meaning it's going to help you to do those animations within your apps. Um, I recommend check out Framer and Principle um, at Google, at uh, DoorDash. Um, they use um, these software to um, create an uh, interactive mock-up um, so that stakeholders and other designers within the team can actually like play around with the design before um, it goes to um, development. Um, so next up, I'm going to talk about the uh, UX process of how um, you know how how to do like UX um, or how to begin a project. Um, so things to keep in mind is that um, these process it's going to be different for each project and it's going to be different for at each company as well. And it's not going to be one size fit all, and it's not going to be a linear process. Um, so within the industry, um, there are three um, famous or like well-known UX process. So the first one is called Human Centered Design um, or short for um, HCD. Um, and then other one is Design Thinking and the next one is Lean UX. Um, so I'm gonna cover the first two mostly. Um, so um, the first one is Human Centered Design. So these are the steps that um, the human centered design process focus on. What they do is that they involve the users at a very early state and involve them um, throughout the whole design process. So for example, um, at the company, they want to do a new uh, website. Um, they got all the requirements ready and they got their audits done. Um, this is where they involve the users um, very early to get their feedback. So um, HCD or human centered design, let people have their say and um, also let them know about like feedback about the products as it is being designed. So at the end of the process, um, um, the, the solutions is very strong because you know for sure that you have involved the user throughout the whole design process. So at the end, you know that your solutions will work because your user has always been there to um, you know, give you feedback. Um, the next process is called design thinking. So this is where um, most of the UX bootcamp they're teaching. Um, so design thinking um, includes five steps, uh, which is empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. So um, this one is a little bit more controversial because um, um, it's only five steps and many of you know the senior UX designers or people who are in the industry for so long, they do not agree with this as much because um, it gives the new designers or like the students who just got into UX the fall idea that if they do these five steps, that means they are doing UX. Um, so um, just want to remind again, like if you, you know, learn, start to learn UX and run into design thinking, uh, make sure you understand that these are just a guideline, um, a process. It won't be like this for, um, for all of your projects. So let's say if you are doing like, you know, five different apps, um, if the process is not going to be the same, uh, it will be different every time. Um, so next, I'm going to cover some basic UX terms. Um, this is something that we use on a daily basis and it's good to um, you know, understand what those mean and also the purpose of it. Um, so persona is one of them. Um, personas are fictional characters and by doing personas, it will help you to scope out the range of user who will be using your products. So for example, if you are designing a, an app for Gen Z, um, you need to do persona to understand their needs and their frustrations and their pain point. Um, by doing persona, it will also help you and your team to focus on targeting the design on the targeted audience and not, again, not based on personal experience. Um, the next one is something called empathy map. Um, so when you do empathy map, it will allow you to understand your users 
um, like standpoint and thought. Um, and also this will help you to prioritize their needs. So when you um, are doing a website or an app, um, you can kind of see from their perspective of what they say or does or think and feel um, when they land on a certain user flow. Um, so again, this will help build empathy for your users and this will also remove bias from your design as well. Um, the next term is something called wireframing. Um, so wireframing is basically a narrative of the user flow. Um, think of this as a rough draft that help you to see how your products works uh, without doing any design or any coding yet. Um, this is the fastest way to explore different directions um, and the fastest, the cheapest way to uh, test your solutions. So before jumping into, you know, doing the design, this is the must um, have step. Um, next term, I will talk about uh, user flow. So this is very similar to the wireframe. Um, it's also narr uh, narrative the, um, the user flow, um, but this helps you to see the user journey from their entry point. Um, through a set of steps that, um, you know, toward the successful um, final dis um, actions. So um, doing user flow, you're going to see how their journey uh, goes from, you know, the moment they sign up to the moment they get to their goal. Um, for the next term, it's called prototyping. So within prototyping, there are um, low fidelity and high fidelity prototyping. So this is considered part of the user testing um, and this is a way to collect and analyze feedback from your users or from your peers or from your you know, stakeholders at a very early stage. And again, this is a fast and cheap way to explore different solution as well because you don't need to you know, fully design um, or have it like fully functioning to see how it works. Um, for low fidelity prototyping, um, this could be on paper, this could be on digital, um, and this will also be uh, an opportunity to test out your copies, your text that goes onto these pages. Um, and then this will be, you know, great to test out new features of your products if you already have like, you know, a website built, if you already have an app built already and you want to add like an add-on feature to it. Um, doing prototyping um, will help you to see the scale and see the concept a little bit more clear. And then for high fidelity, this is where um, it's going to be closest to your final design. And this should be um, digital and it should be clickable and interactive at this phrase. Um, this will help you to you know, see your products work from A to Z. Um, and also um, this will help you to do some early user testing with your user to see if this works properly or not. Um, and if you, you know, want to run a startup later or like working at a startup with a friend, um, this is a way to um, pitch your idea with your stakeholders and non-technical audiences um, without having to actually develop um, any, any, anything yet. Um, so a lot of people use this to um, do fundraise um, for their startup. Um, so next up, I'm gonna talk about, you know, how to get started in UX. Um, so first, um, know how to use the tool. Um, and there are a lot of free courses online that will help you to do so. So do check out free Figma courses and um, also Adobe XD courses um, and LinkedIn Learning to uh, get to get, get used to these tools. Um, and then for um, learning like the fundamental of UX and research, I would recommend check out um, some of the lower cost or like free classes on Udemy, Coursera, and Skillshare. Um, also check out Interaction Design Foundation as well. Um, they have like a, sub sub uh, I think subscription based um, like account. So you can, um, I think pay by month and then you will have access to different classes. Um, I'm not sure how much it is, but um, yeah, do check it out. I think it was around, I would say $30 per month, um, but um, that was a while ago, so I'm not sure what happened, uh, what, what it is now. And for San Jose State students, um, if you have background in visual design or like graphic design already, already 
I would recommend picked up other courses um, in the related field. So um, if you have graphic design background, some cognitive classes or picked up some research and psychology classes. So you learn a little bit more about the other side of you know, user behaviors and stuff. Um, and then same thing, if you have background on, um, in psychology, um, picked up some visual design class um, and graphic design class. So these will be um, things that you will use um, during um, your uh, career as a UX designer. Um, I also re uh, recommend check out UX books and UX podcasts. Um, there are a few that I recommend here if you want to check out some books. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, Don't Make Me Think um, or 100 Things Every Designer Needs to Know About People. Um, those are going to be very helpful. Um, and then there will be um, online, there are a lot of articles and UX events and workshops that will be available to you as well. Um, so um, when you attend those workshops, you're going to learn from the people who is like working in the industry who will give you a very, um, you know, like true perspective and teach you things that, um, that they apply in the real world. So I um, do recommend those. Um, and I usually find events on Eventbrite. Um, so if you go on eventbrite.com and just click, click on or find UX event, there should be a bunch uh, pop up and most of them are free. Um, so to practice UX, I would recommend, um, you know, starting a portfolio or a case study um, to kind of get used to the workflow or like the um, design process. And um, I do recommend check out UX designer portfolio as well so that you can um, see how um, people structure their case studies and how do they solve certain problems. Um, and then if you have some time, um, I recommend create your uh, own sign projects. So uh, if you have an app idea or a website idea, um, go ahead and start do it. Um, follow the UX process and, um, you know, engage your friend, engage, you know, interview some people and start a case study. Um, and then the next time you are, you know, checking your app or buying something online, uh, pay attention to some of the common uh, UX flow. So like look at how they do like login and sign up and check out. Like um, for example, if the next time you go on Amazon, kind of analyze the page a little bit. Like why is this such a successful UX? Like why is this, um, you know, very, very useful to use, easy to use and um, you know, why? what is the reason why you keep coming back to Amazon and buy their stuff? Um, so think about things like that. Um, and then other thing is, um, is super important to find a mentor who is a UX expert, um, who has been working in the industry. Um, so you can find those people. I would recommend, uh, check out amazing design people list, um, is adplist.org. Um, these are professional designers at, you know, big tech companies who are doing mentor hours for free. Um, so check out book like a half an hour with them to understand more about what they actually do at work and learn from them. Um, and then also um, check out some of the communities online as well. Um, so there are a few, including my own, which is Student of UXD. Um, check out Design X and uh, Hexagon UX and um, Mes Mes Memorize Day as well. Um, so these are a few community to check out. Um, I found it very helpful as I was starting my career. Um, I was, you know, learning from a lot of different students, different people within the industry through the Slack group. So recommend um, checking them out. And the next one is UX boot camps. So there are a pros and cons with UX boot camp. Um, if you guys, you know, are interested in UX boot camp, um, you, you might have seen a lot of ads like running around. Um, so bootcamp, um, they teach us the fundamental and the basic of UX. Usually lasts about six weeks to um, 12 months. And this will be your most expensive options. Um, even though it's for like, you know, a few months, um, it's gonna cost about 3,000 to $14,000 um, for the courses. Um, and before you sign up, make sure you do research on different bootcamp and also the pros and cons um, that come with it as well. And also, um, 
chat with someone who have gone through boot camp to understand um, their journey and if boot camp was helpful for them. Um, many of the boot camp they advertise that you can become a UX designer in like six weeks or six months. Um, this is not true at all because um, what they teach is going to be just the basic of it. After the boot camp, there will be a lot more to learn. Um, I've been in the industry for five years and I'm still learning every day. You do not stop after six weeks. There are a lot of things to learn. Um, and also many boot camp, they advertise that you will be job ready or guarantee you a job like right after six weeks. Um, however, um, I would suggest that you go and do research on this because many um, people have proven that um, that um, it will not guarantee you a job because company they have um, higher expectations um, more than you know doing a six week boot camp. So um, do research before you spend a lot of money on boot camps. Um, so next up, I will talk a little bit about UX portfolio. Um, and as you may know, if you are design students, you know, Dribbles and Behance are really famous among the design communities. Um, but so uh, just so you know, UX design um, portfolio is not, um, it should not be on Dribbles or Behance. Um, within the industry, Dribbles and Behance are for inspirations only. Um, it's not really considered a UX portfolio. Um, this portfolio only shows the visual design and the user interface of the applications. As you're looking at some of the thumbnail right here, it does not show any process. It does not show any research or user engagement. So it looks really nice, but you don't know how it works. And companies, they're looking for you know, more than just the interface. Um, so when you're applying for a job, um, as a UX designer, uh, companies will be looking for something called a case studies. Um, usually um, they expect to see about two to four case studies in your portfolio. And uh, these case studies should show your process from A to Z. Uh, it should show um, you know, your problems, how you solve the problem, how do you um, create a user journey, and how do you, you know, come up to the final design. They want to see like, how you think and you know, how, how do you come up with the final solutions. Um, and it should tell a story and it should show that you successfully propose the solutions. Um, and these are what you uh, will be expected to show during your interview and walk them through um, every step that you make um, throughout the whole process. Um, and lastly, before we leave today, I uh, just wanna um, kinda name out some UX myth. Um, a lot of thing, a lot of saying going around that, oh, you need to know how to code to get into UX design. Um, that's not true at all. Um, you are expected to know a little bit of basic of HTML uh, or CSS, but you do not need to know how to code at all. Um, uh, at the job, you will mostly going to be focusing on creating an experience for the user. So uh, coding is going to be the job of your developers. Um, and also, you don't need to be super great at UI design. Um, again, a lot of uh, students who come from psychology and sociology background come into UX um, and they don't have a visual design background. So um, some companies, uh, some big companies like Google, they actually have a whole division of visual design that will help the UX design to create um, a good uh, visual design. So some company, um, they actually have um, like a whole UI team that will take, help, help take care of that too. So um, doesn't need to be super great at UI design um, and uh, those things you can pick up um, pretty, pretty easily. And also, again, you don't need to know how to do all type of user research because that is a job of a UX researcher. But um, just know some basic one like how to do survey, how to um, conduct a user interview. Um, that should be uh, that should be good. Um, so I think um, I can do like a quick Q and A. I think we have like I can do a five minute Q and A. So if you have any question, please uh, put it in the chat, and I will just um, pick um, a few to answer. Um, yeah. So please uh, put your question in. Uh, and if you have if you guys don't have questions, then we can end it here. Um, but I'll just wait for like a few seconds if anyone has any question.
Sorry, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, Zoom is doesn't have a good user interface. I cannot see the chat when I share a screen. So that's the example of a bad UX. Um, so how long, how long after you start learning UX that you land your first job? So I started. I, I self-taught myself UX when I was 19, and I figure that um, to learn more from the industry, I need to have an internship. So what I did was I designed like one or two personal uh, case studies. I did like a fun app. I did a makeup app just you know with my friend for fun and apply for an internship. And I got um, an internship um, when I was 20 with just like two case studies on my portfolio. Um, that I do for fun and at that time there wasn't any like design process that I follow I was just kind of doing it um, like on my own so um, I would say just practice and then apply for an internship just just try to do it and um, um, I, I would say you, you, you get something um, and what is your take on unpaid internship so unpaid internship is actually illegal. So um, if, if the company is for profit and they post an unpaid internship, um, actually do not do, do not take them. They're actually illegal. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's not good for you too because um, you know they will expect you to work a lot and um, it sucks not to get paid. Um, so would DMA, I, I think that's digital media, right? Uh, I'm not sure what that stands for, but um, I think it's digital media. Um, and yeah, I would say that would be a good major to go into UX too. Um, again, if you have that background, then pick up you know, the other, the science part of it as well, not just uh, focus on the um, digital um, media or like graphic design aspect of it. And let's say, UX and UIs are completely different jobs. Um, so at some big companies, because um, the project is really big or if the scope of the project is really large, they actually um, have a UI team that will take care of that. But um, for majority of companies, um, you, when you are UX designer, you also do the UI part as well. Uh, I would take, I think, three more questions. Um, let's see if which one is helpful. Um, so, um, is there a difference in entry level wage if you have BA versus BFA degree? So, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a good thing to say or bad thing to say, but uh, for UX design, um, they really care about your experience. Um, they do not care about your de degree at all. Um, so I would say uh, focus on the experience, uh, try to land some internship, try to do your own personal project, um, and then you will um, get, get, a, get a good job uh, somewhere. So um, yeah, they care about more about your experience than your degree, I would say. Um, and let's see. So I see that there are a lot of interviews and portfolio questions. But um, actually, I will cover a lot of that in my next workshop. Um, so um, I would say uh, come back next time uh, since we're running out of time. But um, for the next workshop, I will be talking a lot about how to land an internship. Uh, what do they, uh, what do companies look for in um, portfolios and how to nail um, the UX interviews. Um, so please do sign up. It's going to be on October 2nd. Um, so please do check it out. And just lastly, um, so I just want to say thank you for coming. And if you find anything helpful, please do share with me on LinkedIn and um, do connect with me on LinkedIn as well. And also, again, come to the second workshop, which is going to be on October 2nd. Um, and for those who really want to get into bigger company like Google, Dropbox or Facebook, I will talk about my experience as well and also kind of give you some guidance on how to uh, structure your case study and um, also how to go through like um, their interviews as well. So I think that's the end of uh, my workshop. Thank you guys for coming.